Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Dice Masters Live with me, Richard. And me, Jimmy. So this week's competitors, we've got Mr. Andy Iron Man Jones. Obviously he's a man you know very well, one, one third of the Rolling Dice Triforce. And then against him we've got Catherine the Newbie Chung, um, somebody else I know fairly well. Uh, she's new to the game, she might not know what she's doing at any point. But we'll see what happens. Unpredictability, you know, it can work for you. They're both relatively new to the game. Yeah, Andy's been playing for a while, but had a bit of downtime, so he's he's not that experienced. Um, Catherine, brand new to the to the sport of, of dice masters. Um, so the, who knows what will happen today? So you can see there that Andy Jones' playstyle is fanboy, which is also why his signature card is Iron Man. Um, yeah. um, he's not one for strategies. He's playing with the people he likes the most are going to get used. Yeah. So. And Catherine Chung, the one thing she does know is she needs to get stuff out fast, and that doesn't mean that it's going to be very nice. She's going to be playing cheap and nasty today. Uh, let's just see what becomes of it. Okay, so the action cards we've got with us today. Uh, Andy's brought gearing up and focus power, and Catherine's gone for distraction and invulnerability. So all those cards are going to be available for people to buy from, which makes a change from when we normally have these matchups, where there's usually at least something we've seen before. Yeah, there's no overlaps today. I mean. We've only got two globals, both from Catherine, so pay one mass to remove one attacker from the attack zone to the field. That's going to come in uh, useful against people like Storm and the Punisher if they make an appearance. And then we've got pay one lightning on the invulnerability for target cards who gets minus one attack. So, you know, whether or not we'll see those getting used, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, it'll be, as we're seeing the team's about to come out, we'll work out which one of those globals Catherine's decided works best for her team, but then the downside is your opponent, in this case Andy, can also use them, so we'll see who makes the most use out of those globals. Okay, so on to the team selection. Andy, straight up with Beast Mute Take 6 6. So Catherine with Green Goblin. Hawkeye Longbow. Cyclops, if looks could kill. Unstoppable Colossus. Nova, which up. Oh, Andy's already decided he doesn't want to see that card, so. Veto on the Quasar Nova. Then Nick Hawk Fury, Ray. Hawkeye, Green Goblin, Goblin Lord, Storm, Captain America, Avenging Angel. Uh, the veto for the fanboy card there. Um. Of course, I mean it's it's going to be no surprise if he's got one in reserve, but that makes sense from Catherine. So here we'll see. Obviously, there's his reserve <laughs> card, which was another version of Iron Man, and Catherine's gone with Iron Man to replace Nova. Yeah. So we've got two Iron Men there, uh, both the same card. Um, of course, we've got both both people have gone with a storm. Uh, Catherine's gone with the more aggressive uh, uh, goddess of the plains, so that'll be re-rolling any that any of Andy's attackers. And uh, Andy's gone with the re-roll when fielded. So we'll see how those both pan out. They've both got the same goblin. Um, yeah, you can see maybe if they've been doing a bit of reading online beforehand, they're picking a couple of cards that are usually ever present in that. So Hawkeye appearing in both teams, Beast in both teams. So. We'll get some kind of mirror game here where they're both just gonna yeah, make the same choices. We'll ex see. Exactly. I mean, obviously, Andy's also got Nick Fury in there that'll help him get Iron Man and Captain America out. So, whether he'll make an appearance. Um, and Catherine, again, just mainly quite cheap characters, all under four apart from Cyclops, uh, who's the big spender there. Yeah, he's one I tend to play with. Uh, that's Anything at seven is normally your, your win card, so we'll see if you can roll enough energy to get him out and do some big damage. Yeah, and like uh, Andy's got uh, relatively cheap teams, but the Colossus and the Captain America at six. Um, and But we know he's going to be spending all his money on Iron Man early doors. Yeah, Iron Man's going to, um, I'm sure, be the first thing he purchases. He's, he's proud about that. and Whether he can get all four into play before this match is over, we'll see. Right, okay, so I think we'll go on to the match. So Andy starting off rolling, a handful of energy, just what he needs to get going. He, he's not looking like a man with a strategy here. <laughs> yeah. He's not sure what to do, but he's gone with the two beasts, that makes sense, get the defensive characters bought early. Catherine coming in rolling again, a good handful of energy, and she's gone with with a beast and a uh, and a Johnny Storm. Yeah, gonna... So a bit more of a mix, kind of Andy going for all out defence, Catherine trying to balance it with Johnny Storm, but it's got a bit of a, a bit. decent attack there. 
bit more aggressive and that's that's the Jolly Storm that will boost up when you field other characters, so that, that could help out further down the line. Let's see what we're going for with Andy Jones. Two sidekicks and two random energies. Uh, not so certain what to do. I think, like you said, Jimmy, he's got no strategy here. Or oh, he's just he's playing the bluffing game here. Um, he's re-rolling. Re and somehow he's re-rolled exactly the same thing. Which, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Um, Obviously, if you saw our pilot, both players last time decided sidekicks weren't the way to go. Um, this might be a blessing in disguise that Andy's got to use those two sidekicks now. So at least he's got something in defence, which kind of cost them dearly last time. So Catherine, again, you can see that she's new to the game, she's not sure what to do. Does she go with the Storm? Yes, she does go with the Storm. Oh, no, that's not even the right dice. This is confusing. It's all just mind games at this stage, it's <laughs> this, early early doors. Yeah, this is just to put off the, uh, the, the veteran Andy Jones and uh, everyone knows Round three is where action really kicks off, so you know, it's, it's playful at the moment, they're both sizing each other up. There we go, she's re-rolled the mask, uh, and that allows her to buy the storm that she was planning to. Um, interesting, I'd have gone with uh, with buying some more cheap characters to start off with, Andy's already got his three beasts in the bag, and two of them have come out just there. Can he get them on the field? And it's one, you know he's going to be fielding with the three cost, two random energy. Suddenly his lineup's looking a little bit beasty there. It is. I mean, he's, he's already got the two sidekicks there, so he could just go for the chip damage at this point. But uh, let's see what he's going to do. And re no, he's it. For, for energy. I'm assuming he's going for energy there. I'm not so sure. Uh, well, now now you know why. Look, there we go. Going into the purchase on the uh, on the Iron Man at the fielding the other beast. That's that, that's what he's all about. Yeah. Right? Catherine here would probably quite like to roll some some character faces just to get something on that board. Yeah, I mean, you know that's buying an Iron Man so early, he's going to be coming back out relatively quick, so Catherine needs to uh, needs to get some, some things in there that she can block. And there we go, straight straight with the, with the sidekick. I'm not even hesitating to put that in the lineup. And then and keeping the random energy, re-rolling, that's the beast. And then the two random energy with which she can buy about half of her team, I think, is about two cost, so... Yep, that's the, she's got a lot of options here. Um, and a special shout out for our new camera angles, I should mention. Give them some love. <laughs> People have joined us. Having not seen the pilot, they wouldn't notice, but if you do see the pilot, we're, we're going for different camera angles, multi-cam. Multi-cam, yeah, we, we're still not quite as happy as we want to. What's she buying there? Still not sure. Looking off to the side. But... Checking with our adjudicators. Yeah. But so she's purchased the Johnny Storm there. And here we go, Andy again with another beast out of the bag. Um, and rolling all energy. Okay. Are we going to see another Iron Man purchase? Rubbing his hands together in anticipation of that. Well, that, he's going to have to re roll if he does want to buy the Iron Man. At this point, if I was him, I'd be re rolling and trying to get that beast on the field. But... No, it's just going for the Green Goblin. That's it's going to work well. Green Goblin and an action dice there. Uh, it's the invulnerability. Interesting. Like you said, not what you'd have done, but he's obviously got a game plan and he's sticking to it. Okay. So here we go. This is going to be a Storm. A storm and a uh, and a psychic character that's potentially could clear him all the way out if he gets those fielded. Working out what to do at the moment. Crunching the numbers. So there we got Storm fielded, so now we'll see if she makes a choice to attack. Whether she can do some serious uh, damage with the re-rolling. Here we go. So this is uh, gearing up for the attack now. Keeping the beast behind and God the Storm of the Plains wipes all of Andy's team out. Going straight through for four early damage. That's that's pretty good that's going the into the best round she could four with that attack. Andy, but it does, of course, mean that Andy's going to have a three more dice to roll this turn. So, yeah, obviously you've got the different storm cards. Some centre used, some that one, as potent as it is, does put them in prep. So it leaves you open to them returning fire in the next turn with 
far more dice. Yeah, and here we go. This is the Iron Man coming out. Um, so potential to, to very much get his own back now. Because of course, Captain's just left with the Beast um, on her front lines. So he's got his invulnerability. He can relatively cheap Iron Man, a Beast. Um, what are your thoughts on invulnerability, Rich? Um, I, li I like having it in there because it forces me to keep attacking, whereas I, w I wouldn't always do it, and he's re-rolled the invulnerability for the energy. That makes sense early game. Uh, but invulnerability for me, it just makes sure that I'm, I'm putting my characters out there and, and wiping out my opponents. Uh -huh. And there we go, he's gone in for buying the, st buying the store and another um, invulnerability. Uh, of course, that's one of the cheapest uh, action dice on the table. And then fielding the Iron Man and the Beast. That's that's a pretty good turn for him. I mean, obviously, whether he'd have wanted to go for a few sidekicks, but we don't know. Okay, and that's Johnny Storm out of the bag already. All the dice going back in. Okay, and then the storm coming out as well, and that's that's pretty good. I mean, gonna roll. The issue here is obviously there's three fielding costs there, and she's got two energy. So there's a decision to make. Of, I mean, does she try and roll one down to a lower form, or if I was her, I'd be re-rolling the Johnny Storm to get to get Storm out again. But no, she's gone. She's gone to re-roll the Storm. She's getting the four energy. Um, and she, she knows that that was perhaps not the best thing to do. Um, but clearly she's just a fan of Johnny Storm. Um, and she's got the uh, two, two energy spare. to... Both masks, so she's, she's got Beast in front of her for two masks. Um, so yeah, it's either going to be that or an invulnerability. Um, see, she's not really happy with either. And there's the Beast. Yeah, going with the Beast. Imagine Andy breathes a sigh of relief that he's not facing the storm. Yeah. And seeing a repeat of what happened. I mean, just getting that storm. That that storm can just wreak um, havoc. Yeah. The uh, of course the global on um, distraction could come in pretty useful for him because he can keep knocking her back to prevent him from uh, from having to have his carriages re-rolled. But this early, you can't really start saving pigeon. And here we go. So he's rolled the. Uh, the lowest form green goblin, that's good for him. Um, and then he's got three energy as well. Not so useful a character when you haven't got sidekicks. But all of his cards have some form of sidekick related tweak going on. Um, well, he's got, yeah, he's got the green goblin that boosts his sidekick, and then the uh, Captain America that does the same. So he could be doing some real damage if he manages to get both of those out. Catherine with the sidekick and three energy. Obviously not the greatest thing to pluck out the bag by round six. No, for generic dice, but it does thin the bag out for your next turn. Exactly. So. Exactly. And then she's got one character side there. She's gonna do the mirror. No. Going with Angel. That makes sense. I mean, he's relatively good dice for the price. Filled in the uh, side of course. Back on to Andy. Seeing a much more patient game this time round, both. Yeah, everybody's. I think it's a bit. It's a bit more relaxed. They're both. There, there was some bad blood between uh, between Rich and Tim, and obviously, with, with it not going quite so well for Rich last game, it does get frustrating. Um, and Andy, you in with another good roll, two free beasts, and a vulnerability, and a lightning. Um, he's putting those beasts to one side. Of course, they're going to get fielded. One energy. I'd imagine he'll re-roll that action, knowing how he likes well, to play with yeah, going, for, there it going is. for cold hard cash. But he's re-rolled the, uh, the same invulnerability side, and uh, got the punch there. The same same stunt he pulled earlier. It's a, a new Andy Jones method of the re-roll to still end up with what you have to pull. But this is okay for him because I mean that's going to be Catherine's only got three three dice, so it makes sense to attack at this point, uh, which he is doing. And let's see. He's putting forward everything but the, uh, the high level beast, uh, which knocks out Catherine's entire team. He goes in for two damage on her. Obviously, not quite as good as he'd have liked, but that means that he's keeping four dice back. Um, 
Yeah, and with that time. invulnerability, they get back in the field. So as you were saying, it's a good way of attacking, but not really suffering any consequence. Because exactly. even if they lost that matchup, they're going back in the lineup anyway. So exactly. Here we go on the roll, and that's a handful of dice there, and pretty good rolls. Um, she can get everything fielded. It's that cheap and nasty playstyle we're talking about where a lot of those characters, they don't have expensive sides, so the, per the upshot of that is she can field these from very little energy and end up with quite a lineup. The only downside of that is when it comes to doing damage, there's not many big numbers there. But of course it doesn't mean that you should be able to block any attacks that come for her, um, so that's going to be quite good. See, she's, she's debating whether or not to attack at the moment. It would make sense if she did, but Andy's going to be able to block most of it uh, with his current lineup. Yeah, and obviously with Beast, it's not his best best use in the form of attack. He's all of his buffs are based on blocking, but sometimes you've just got to she's send him out. In this case, she's held them back, which is probably the right idea, as a fair few have fallen there. But it means that, of course, Andy's going to be having uh, many more dice on his roll with the uh, blocking of the two beasts. Um, he's got four in his prep area now, uh, in addition to the four that come out of the bag. I think this is going to be a game of just massive dice rolls. Um, getting another Iron Man out, he's got to be pleased with that. But he needs to re-roll some of that energy, or just go in buying the big hitters. I mean, six is kind of almost teasing him. Would re-roll the Goblin the Psychic and go for a, the seven to buy a big card? No. Well, Catherine the, obviously has Cyclops, Andy with his lineup didn't go for any sevens. No, he's got the six. I mean, he's, he could be buying the uh, Captain America, he could be buying the. Uh, he's opted to re roll. Re roll the his character. Fanboy Captain America, I'm surprised. Uh, Iron Man. Yeah, like, of course, um, that, that's strange. Rolling see him roll out his favourite character. Maybe he's been the whole playstyle he's established. But it means he's got the Green Goblin in and he can buy, his, buy the Captain America, so maybe instead. Uh, he's, de he's deviated. Yeah, I his, think his, his playstyle is more sidekick at the moment with those yeah, Captain America, Green Goblin not link what ups. Not what we're used to seeing from him, but uh, that's very much what it looks like. Uh, oh, and it appears we've got some sort of repeat of what happened last time with people keeping stuff in their prep area. Um, I'm not incredibly happy about that. Uh, see if we can get a message to the player to, to re roll those. Has it reached the floor yet? I there we go. Think it has, that's, yep. that's okay. I mean, she's a newcomer to the game. It's it's fair enough that it's a bit complicated, but you know we're we're above that here at, um, at Dice Master Five. Okay, so she's getting another free character. I mean, like you said, uh, Jimmy, that this we're getting you know, there's a bit of a rush going on here with that's a lot of characters in the lineup. As great as Andy's characters are in his field, you can't block more than one with a character. So yeah, you're going to get overran here. I mean, the, the, and of course the storm as well, that means potentially she can wipe out anything that's, uh, that he's got fielded. Uh, purchasing another... But purchasing a beast there. Um, yeah, I think there was almost going to be a hesitation there to not attack this turn until Catherine realised quite what position of power she was in. So here's the re-roll, which... Uh, rolls, rolls the, uh, the beast up, um, which is peculiar. But then she's getting through to do um, quite a bit of damage. 8 to 18 now. Uh, That's a big hit and leaves Andy with just the lonely beast. Um, and a, if, a hefty prep area there. Of... Yeah, I mean this is this is always the thing, isn't it? If you're if you're rolling characters out, if you're getting them knocked out, it means that you're going to see them coming back uh, in the roll, which can allow you to buy some. You know, some heavy duty characters and get them back out. Yeah, it's why you'll see some players just decide not to block certain characters and let them go straight through because you're leaving your opponent completely open exactly. to a counter attack. Yeah. So if you're leading on health, it, it can be in your interest to let some cheap things through and then you know that's in their use pile. If it's some of their characters and you know they haven't got many, you're leaving them vulnerable. Exactly, exactly. And here we go. And speaking of vulnerable, there's Andy and one of his invulnerabilities. Whether or not we'll see that get used this time. Um, he seems to be pretty good at re-rolling the invulnerability for energy at the moment, so whether that will happen. But he's got um, 
three characters on that first roll. That's uh, setting them up pretty well. Uh, only have one cost to field them all as well. Yeah, and that sidekick that works so well with Green Goblin. So no surprise that stayed where it is. Yeah. But then re-rolling again, the uh, invulnerability gets rolled as an invulnerability. Um, free storm. Uh, this is going to be messy. Uh, yeah. To be able to have two storms for nothing. Um, and this is the storm that, when fielded, allows him to re-roll Catherine's characters. So this could start, you know, he could start getting his revenge for Catherine's early storm plays. I mean, we're into round nine. This is definitely no matter what type of player they're playing. You get into some big situations by round nine because people have built up that energy. They've bought a whole number of dice. You're getting multiples of certain characters. Abilities start to stack together. Okay, there we go. And he re-rolls one of Catherine's beasts out. There's one left. This um, is going to hurt. Yeah, this is going to be quite a bit of damage back at her. Um, she blocks the green goblin, but she's got to take all of that damage. Uh, seven points there. That's. That's pretty nasty, still but she's in the still lead. leading. They go straight through, so you're not going to see Storm for a little while um, on the upside. And of course it means that she's now got four dice in her prep area, plus so the four that she's drawing. Here's the reply. Again. Uh, oh, and just energy. That's not what you want to see at this point in the game. Um, she needs to re-roll all of those I'd characters. I'd imagine yeah, everything's going to get rolled here. She's giving the energy to one side. That makes sense. Uh, there's potential for it to be a bit costly. The beast. I'm not sure that I agree with that, but it's defensive characters, and I don't know whether she's worried from those early rounds where she couldn't afford to field the yeah. two dice at once. That's. But she says she's gone for the. Trying to buy the Cyclops. glasses, but she's not got. Cyclops for seven. Okay, that's. I mean, that's that's interesting. I mean, I guess she's only got the one character on the other side, but now of course she's left with. She can't purchase. She can't field those dice. Um. It's not too late to undo the purchase. Yeah, I think there might be a part exchange it's still within the 30 day refund <laughs> policy. Um, <laughs> yeah, and she, she knows she's not, that wasn't right there, but she's it's laugh, laughed off. It still weakened her hand in that she would have re rolled some of those character yeah, bases for absolutely. sure. So I think that's why Andy's let that one slide and not taken it to the to the exact letter and of she chose that dice to make us deal with it. So. Um, um, Buying the, uh, buying the Iron Man, uh, so I'm not sure whether Andy might be regretting that now, having to fight against his hero. Um, she's going in with the attack, so the Storm and the Angel versus Andrew. Andy's uh, Goblin, which she rolls up to a 5-5. Five, five. Um, and obviously he lets Storm through because only a fool yeah, decides could... to block Storm and let her stay in the lineup. Yeah, you don't want that there. Um, of course, that's worked out pretty well for him. Now with the 5-5 five, five Goblin, that's, that's a pretty dangerous dice to have on the field. Mm. Um, that's as good as Storm is. That is, it happens, and that's where it usually comes down to how you're rolling that day, whether she can be your best friend or worst enemy, where you're, everything absolutely. you roll is up. Absolutely, and then he's gone, he's, he's brought out his Iron Man, he's got the invulnerability and a um, sidekick, but of course he's not doing enough energy to feel the Iron Man at the moment. He's been doing well at rolling invulnerability back to invulnerability, so see if he can keep that tradition up here with the reroll. And there we go, rolling it onto a two, and, and he's, yes, there he's dead chuffed at that, that's exactly what he needed, and that allows him to feel the Iron Man and the sidekick, um, and wasting one energy of course. So here comes the fanboy yeah. attack. He's got to attack, it makes sense. Um, and of course the uh, Playboy Iron Man gets to do the extra three damage, so that beast is gonna get knocked out no matter what. After an to let him through and take the six damage. All of a sudden five four, this is a much more even match. Uh, I'm not sure which way this is gonna go at the moment in round ten, but it's it can't be going. For Anyone's longer. game, obviously. Your podcast and compadre and housemate. I think this is one of those situations. Whoever wins, I you're going to lose. Yes, so. Absolutely. Um, I'm being very careful to be quite kind to everybody at the moment. But, uh, so I mean, a bit, another big hand roll, but too much energy there for Catherine Chung. Um, she puts the beast to one side. She does she roll it? She's not certain. Uh, Has it changed face? Who even knows at this stage? <laughs> this is... Keeping it to herself. Um, See, she's not sure what to do. Uh, does she just let him drop? And oh, there it is. So she's, she's rechecking what she's got, and yeah, she is putting it to one side like she should have done. Um, 
she needs those characters out. I mean, and he's still got the uh, still quite a lot of energy. Not not the perfect role for her, but it's a good lineup for defense. And some energy to spend, so it means that she can. No, it's not quite enough energy to buy the uh, Cyclops. She's getting ahead of herself there. Um, you can definitely see the Cyclops is in her mind. That's yeah, twice now she going want, for she, the. She wants to get. Um, I mean, his looks could kill, so you know he's he's a dangerous guy to have on your team. Um, Six doesn't leave her too many options with the cheap and nasty lineup. But another Iron Man, which might bring a tear to Andy's eye to see his his icon come against him, but I've just, decided to mix it up and kind of go for quantity rather than quality there. That makes sense. She's got the Green Goblin, um, and of course the action dice that's going to help her along the way. Uh, She's got a fairly good defensive lineup to take whatever Andy's going to Andy, aka Tony Stark, yeah. aka Iron Man. Yeah, um, I mean, the Iron Man's still there. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so Captain America's out of the bag. We're just rolling on his shield today. That's not quite what Andy needs at this point. He's re rolling and. And he's got another sidekick. But he's the, got uh, the sidekicks you want for Captain America, but. No sign of the cap himself. Yeah, he's obviously uh, taking a bit of a lazy day purchasing uh, Nick Fury to help him get out his uh, Avengers characters. Fielding the two the two sidekicks, that's that's a pretty good role. Now he's eager, he wants to get either the Green Goblin or get Cap back through to try and buff up those sidekicks. You see, I mean this this could be the end of it. Um, what we were on in there's the uh, That's more like it for a role, that's yeah. That's that's what we need at this point. Um, fielding all three of the characters rolled um, and paying that energy to, of course, field the field the Johnny Storm. Yeah. And now here we go with an. It, I'm not. This is the kind of do or die moment. Does she go with everything, or? Yeah, I'm not quite sure how it adds up. I think she could, maybe. Oh, but the, they're all the weak beasts. And no, that's oh, that's. Pretty painful. Three damage on Andy, leaving him in two. But of course, Iron Man is still there. And with Catherine only on four life, this game is over. But we have to wait for this round to end. Uh, now we said that when you players, maybe Andy will just decide he doesn't feel like attacking because he can't bear to see Iron Man risked in combat situations. I, I, I can't see that happening, Jimmy. Uh, and he's rolled the beast. So that's already two potential damage. Um, re-rolling all that energy there. And again, re-rolling his action for <laughs> the same action. Yeah, he's uh, he's, he's doing well. Um, but, I mean, that's all he needs. He's, he's not realised quite the situation he's in. Yeah, but, I mean, buying the Hawkeye there, but there's no need to do so. Um, I mean, and here we go. The seven... Seven damage there, leaving Catherine on Two minus, to minus three. three. It was it was close, it's and the, that last attack. That's the downside of cheap dice. We've seen that three characters got through and came away with three damage. Yeah, that's that's really not what she needs. And of course, Andy Jones, the winner here. Um, I'm sure we won't hear the end of this on the podcast for a while. Yeah, if you're fans of the other other media of rolling dice, you can find out. Matt Andy's went probably on Twitter right now. Uh, he'll be facebooking it. It'll be on the podcast. Um, I mean, if you see him on the street, he'll be telling you. That's. Uh, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, it was a good win. Like, it was a close game. Um, just good uh, sort of trade of blows from both sides. I mean, I, Catherine could have won it there if she just rolled those beasts a little bit higher. That could have been it. But. Yeah, one difference in the character face. Um, in the end, Iron Man. Iron Man wasn't really his playstyle, but it won it for him. Yeah. Kept him alive. I mean, that, that, that was the, the dice at the, the end that, that dealt the killer blow with the beast just for a little bit of support. I mean, well done to both to both sides. Okay, thanks for watching uh, the second episode of Marvel Dice Masters. Um, we'll be back soon with episode three. Um, Hopefully, this time featuring people you don't need to worry that are going to give you grief. Well, ho the ho fact. hopefully not. Um, but we've got the. If you haven't yet seen the first episode, it's up on YouTube. Um, if you want a bit more information on Marvel Dice Masters, check out RollingDiceShow.com. Um, and if you want to come down to the venue where this is all recorded, it's at Drink Relax Play on Twitter. Um, 
Come check it out. And if you find your booster packs, can you please let us know in the comments? Cause, yeah, because we need we those. need them as much as anyone else does. Then it's becoming a problem. Yeah, absolutely, Jimmy. You're you're spot on there. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Bye.